Hello, and welcome to another update on Penrose, a tiling window manager written in Rust that is sort of mostly in the style of something like Xmonad, so kind of a library for you to write your own window manager. Um, the response I've had from people after the previous video and uh, launching this on crates and mentioning on Reddit has been awesome and amazing. So thank you, everyone who has shown interest. Um, like I said, this is just a kind of hobby project that I've been hacking on for less than a month so far. So um, thank you very much for your interest and support. And thank you very much for everyone who has um, reached out and spoken to me about it or raised an issue on GitHub or um, commented in the Reddit threads. Um, it's been really kind of cool to get this kind of response to it. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, so uh, you might notice if you're looking at the kind of video listing or if you're following along in GitHub, uh, I have skipped a point release. So there was 0.15, and, which is what the first video was on. There was then 0.16, and this is now 0.17 that I'm showing you. Uh, there's nothing wrong with 0.16. There's just me forgetting to make a video for 0.16. So I thought I'd talk about both of them together. Um, but yeah, there's sort of two main kind of uh, features that were um, requested. Um, and um, now kind of implemented in a sort of initial way. And uh, like I said in the original video, I'm kind of working on this fairly regularly. So I thought I'd just release things as I'd go um, and um, get feedback from people on how they're wanting to use this. Um, so first feature, which is you can probably guess from the very odd aspect ratio of the video is multi-monitor support. Um, that how it works. So I can kind of um, move focus between monitors with key bindings. I can move my mouse manually and focus will go over, it's all quite nice. Um, I can also kind of throw workspaces from one screen to another, even if uh, my image viewer doesn't really like it. Um, and yeah, that's kind of about it. Um, you can kind of cycle through the monitors, you can cycle workspaces through the monitors, and multi-monitor works. Um, and so things like polybar will render on the right monitor and various things, which is all quite good. Um, other than that, uh, there's a couple of other things that have been added. Uh, one that was requested and one that is kind of not directly requested, but is kind of a first step at kind of opening this up to be something that can be used um, for more kind of general purpose stuff. Um, so I suppose the first one that was requested is uh, this. So if I go to layouts, so that was the side stack. This is the bottom stack, which is what you saw before. And this is the new one. So this is paper. Um, so this is kind of a fancy monocle layout, essentially. Um, kind of whichever uh, client has focus is kind of expanded out to be kind of much larger than the others. Um, but one interesting thing is if you watch the mouse, this also happens when I change focus via the mouse. So this is now a layout that is triggering on focus change as well as client change. Um, and I can drag clients kind of through the stack as well. Um, and um, move them around that way. Now, this is a little bit weird. Um, it means that there's a change to the way that layouts have been defined. So you can now toggle off and on per layout how you want them to be defined. And as a sort of initial kind of stab at this, um, things like this. So you can toggle on, do you want focus to follow the mouse? And do you want um, the layout to trigger whenever that focus changes. And um, you should also notice that there are no gaps for this layout, whereas there are gaps on the other two. Um, and that is being done on the layout itself. So the layout is configured to be gapless. Um, the example configs have been updated to show you how to set this up. Um, and in addition to that, I have my personal config is now up on GitHub as well. So. It's just sminners slash my penrose config. Um, it's got some of the scripts I'm using, so things like my kind of setup for Rofi and the kind of little power menu thing that I've shown off before, and the polybar config, that's all there. Um, so you can kind of try and get pretty much the setup that I'm showing you right now um, should work from what's here. There's probably a few bits missing, so if there's anything that straight up doesn't work, then please let me know and I'll, I'll get that added in as well. Um, but yeah, so this kind of should show you the kind of changes that are needed to get this working. Um, and the other thing that has been added um, in kind of preparation for some of the issues that people have been raising is um, hooks. So in a much more Xmonad-y style of way of doing things, um, there are now some hooks, um, which, uh, ooh, that's still 1.6, I want. Oh, 17 isn't published yet. Oh, I'm doing this too soon. Oh, well, uh, let's have a look at the config itself then. So um, 
source hooks. Uh, so yeah, so there's now um, a hooks module, which essentially is just defining some function signatures that you can use. Um, and uh, these can be added into your Penrose config and they will be called kind of fairly intuitively based on the name. So a new client gets created, your hook will get called. A layout change happens, hook gets called, workspace change, screen change, and focus change are the current ones that I've got. There's probably going to be a couple more I'd like to add in. In particular, I'd like to add X render change. So adding and removing a monitor, I'd like to be able to hook into that and do a couple of things as well. Um, but yeah, so these are sort of the initial ones that are added. They are now threaded through the window manager. So the, any um, functions that you add um, to the config based on these hooks will be called at the appropriate point um, whenever those actions are triggered. So rather than just being, uh, you can run custom Rust code during a key binding, you can now hook into window manager events and run them there as well. Um, and if we have a look at the sort of reorganized examples, there is a sample config that uses the hooks and does things like this. So config, there's now a config default that will give you um, the kind of default values that were previously in the example config. Um, I'm still setting some stuff explicitly just so I can talk about what is happening with those config elements. Um, this is that paper layout that's using this follow focus. And this is an example of how to set it up here. Uh, there's been a couple of changes to the way that um, the internal methods are working. So this was previously cycle client forward, just as a whole method. Now cycle client, and it takes a direction. Um, this is just to sort of simplify the list of stuff that you'll see if you look through the docs on this. Um, and then hooks. So yeah, so as you can see, this is just a closure. Um, it satisfies the function signature that's defined in hooks.rs. And um, we're doing the same thing that we we're doing before. So we're setting the root window name so we can pick it up in polybar. Um, but in this case, we define our function and then we push it onto the config.layout hooks vector. Uh, same for config.new client hooks. So this one will just um, log out uh, the WM class X property of the client that we've just created. Um, kind of pointless, but just to kind of show you how the hooks are working. Um, and then any of the hooks that are present on that config when we initialize the window manager will be slurped up and run at each of those hook points. Um, so hopefully this should work towards things like dynamic workspaces or potentially implementing kind of DWM style tagging and pinning, which is a thing that a couple of people have asked about. Um, I think that this should be general purpose enough that it's possible to do those things. If it's really painful to do those things, I'll look into seeing if there's another way we can get this set up or extending the hook um, position so that there's a slightly more granular way of doing this. But I think that should allow you to do a reasonable amount, which should be quite nice. Um, so yeah, um, this is Penrose 0 0.1.7. Uh, it's running with config that is currently here. So this is well, not the fourth commit of my Penrose config. That's what I'm running as I'm doing the screencast. Um, yeah, um, go have a look, um, see what you think. And if there are any bugs or any issues, as some people have already been reporting, thank you very much. Uh, please do get in touch on GitHub, and I'll do my best to uh, sort things out. Thank you.